Olympic gold medalist wrestler Jordan Burroughs to Heisman Trophy winner Eric Crouch and the Sandhills in the West. These are all names far more known than just in Nebraska. But Nebraska is known for something else nationwide, and that is our Strategic Air Command. I'm Cade Brownlee, and I'm here to show you a glimpse of what makes the SAC such an importance in Nebraskan history. In 1953, President Eisenhower called for a new look at national defense. The Strategic Air Command was created. Its mission was to become the most powerful air deterrent force to aggression ever created. This museum began in 1959. It has seen some significant changes since then. Visitors who walk into the Strategic Air and Space Museum are greeted by the Lockheed SR-71 Blackbird. This plane was an advanced, long-range Mach 3 strategic reconnaissance aircraft. Blackbird set a record speed of 2,193 miles per hour and flew from New York to London in an hour and 55 minutes. The surface temperature of the plane reaches 1,100 degrees in sustained supersonic flight. This particular plane was flown to the SAC on March 20, 1990. There are many different aircrafts on display in the $29 million museum. This Lockheed T-33 advanced trainer reaches a maximum speed of 546 miles per hour at 25,000 feet. It's called the T-Bird and flew its first successful mission on March 22, 1948. It's considered the most successful jet trainer yet developed. Among these wildly successful aircrafts is one small plane that stands alone. It's the XF-85 Goblin. It was one of two built in 1947. This was intended to serve as a parasite escort fighter for the B-29 Superfortress and the B-36 Peacemaker. It was a good idea that never quite worked out. The two Goblins accumulated only two hours and 19 minutes of flight time. While the aircraft's display shows the United States' successful and sometimes not so successful missions, it's the display of personal items such as prison uniforms, cigarette cases, and shoes that survived the Vietnam War that shed light on what it was like to be a soldier on the ground. The Moving Wall Vietnam Memorial honors those soldiers who died in the Vietnam War. There's a poignant display of messages, flags, stuffed animals, cigarettes, and beer that were left behind by family and friends of those whose names are carved into the wall. This was a powerful scene as I can't imagine the sorrow of those who said goodbye to their loved ones only to never see them again. The evolution in flight attire grew as rapidly as the planes the pilots maneuvered. The leather helmet, goggles, and life preservers were common in all theaters, although some adaptations were made depending on the climate. Perhaps one of the most interesting displays was the fallout shelter to protect against nuclear attack. Among the items needed for survival, a radio, drums of water, medicine, powdered milk, and even a toy for comfort.
Finally, in order to get first-hand experience at what it was like to be a fighter pilot, I stepped inside a flight simulator. That was tough keeping oriented, let alone controlling the plane. All I can say to these pilots is, respect. From the Strategic Air and Space Museum in Ashland, Nebraska, I'm Cade Brownlee.